Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Yeah! Welcome to Drinking Bros. <laughs> yes. right I am on. drinking. I am drinking. What do you got going on there? Yeah, a little natty seltzer. Nice. Reached out to those, those fuckers, and I said, hey, man, mm. I want to get wet with you. I want to I lay in a bed with you, and I want to make a deal happen here yeah. because... You only did 12 ounces. I enjoy 6% alcohol at, at 80 calories. And they said... Fuck off. Seltzer world is exploding. We don't need any form of marketing. Dead serious. Dude, that, that's uh, I love you, them. That's when you know the, the, uh, the seltzer market is blowing up when, when Natty Light is jumping in. Yeah. 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 They've never been the ones to like push the envelope. Everybody, though. But Bud Light just did a huge Super Bowl campaign with Post Malone Big. for seltzer. Yeah. I, uh, well, can I say that? I can say that, right? I was not a big fan of the Bud. We, we didn't like the Bud Light seltzer that much. Uh, it's okay. I thought, it, I thought, I think it needs more flavor, but they'll, there will be another iteration. They'll, They'll die. It out. They'll but die the commercial right was good. The yeah, commercial was great. Getting tossed around in, we the, love uh, in the mini mart. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We love awesome. Post Malone. Yeah. We're big fans of Post Malone. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got the, the, the podcast, Kill Cliff, the podcast here. You know them because they're obviously one of our favorite sponsors on the show, KillCliffCBD.com. We live and die by. Uh, promo code Drinking Bros gets you 20% off there on a, on a case and free shipping. Knocks it down to like three fucking... Eighty three ninety a can. You can get a can of Monster. You can get a can of Kill Cliff with 25 milligrams of CBD in it um, at KillCliffCBD.com. Promo code Drinking Bros 20% off. Then you just add a little bit of shipping. lean to it. A little bit of lean, oh, and then wow. you can really fucking find your inner chi. You guys know, uh, so I was standing out back on the phone earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, Calling a prostitute. No, I was talking to a lady friend of mine, mm-hmm. and a uh, real special lady, and she... I, I saw these geese or uh, pelicans rather walking across the road. Ah, like what the fuck are pelicans doing hanging out around here? Um, we're near the ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, we're, we're like miles. We're miles from the ocean right now. Hood I, pelicans. I'm sure that we're we're a little bit in the hood here. So I'm like, pelicans are white. Yeah, yeah. But uh, as I don't remember which one of you guys said it, but they have there's some black underneath their wings. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. it's like blackface. I think pelicans That's are like racist. The pelican version of, of blackface. Well, I've I've got this theory, and uh, I'll have. Ibby put it up in post. You can see a picture somewhere here or here, wherever the fuck it is. I don't know where he's going to put it. But uh, it's to me, it proves that Pelicans are racist. You'll see it. Okay. Like, who else walks around all, like, entitled like that, white all the time? You in know a what neighborhood I mean? where they don't belong. Yeah. In a neighborhood Warren. because, look, you don't see a whole lot of uh, white folk just walking around casually in this neighborhood. Elizabeth Warren. It's the, Warren, it's the gentrification. Know? That's how it starts. Pelican that's why up. they're here. Yeah, that's why they're here. It's, it's, Gentrify uh, the rest of this neighborhood. Dude, Pelican privilege is real. Yeah, Pelican is. privilege is real. So it's like, real why did the Pelican cross the road to gentrify this black neighborhood that we're living <laughs> exactly. in? Exactly. So exactly. That's why. The neighborhood's already gentrified. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, tell everybody what your names are. I'm Josh. And I'm John. We yeah. Are, and you host Killcliff Podcast. We are. We're trying. We, uh, we, we, uh, we go under the name of the Entrepreneurs, um, and we, uh, we linked up with Killcliff uh, not quite a year ago, and uh, they came to us. We started doing some of their Twitter stuff, and then they were like, hey, we, uh, we're looking to shift gears with our podcast. You guys want to get on and host? And yeah, fuck it. Why not? Yeah. And you were in a Penn State hat. Did you go to Penn State? I did. You did. So did Dan. I went to grad school there. Yeah. So did I. Oh, uh, you did? Yeah. Look I went at to, you two I went to Penn State Harrisburg campus. Which is again like going to yeah yeah it's like it's like the community college. There's not a lot of Penn pelicans State. around. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> not a lot of pelicans. <laughs> Are you a fan of their football team? Then I love them. Are you really? Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry about that. I'm, I know, and you, you know, also, I went you to Ohio State, uh, and I, I live outside of Philly, and you have a Dallas hat on, so you know. Well, the thinking. Dallas hat is for a different reason. Um, we're uh, we're we're trying to get Post Malone to come on the show. We love him. Oh, right. uh, he's a gi- gigantic Dallas Cowboys fan. Yeah. Uh, so brought the hat into the office today to take it with me. Um, popping on down to Tejas here soon. Uh, this, it's been our elusive interview on this podcast. We, we continuously talk about it, but um, hence the, the Cowboys hat. It's going to stay here, and then we'll put it in the bag. Yes. Uh, I don't forget it. But Dan and I host a rather large sports show. Obviously, Ohio State plays Penn State every year, so we go to yes. the game together. If you're a diehard Penn State fan, the last two years have probably been the worst of your life, I would imagine, right? <laughs> Um, I would worse. actually go back to the Sandusky yeah. uh, year and I would mm. end, uh, end the demise. Were of, you of there Joe. during that? It's definitely been no. worse. Oh, okay. No, I appreciate you assuming I'm much younger than I am, but that's... Uh, yeah, I didn't know. 
I, I didn't. Yeah. You can never tell with somebody with a shaved head. Yeah. You know, um, some people bald early and they're like, "Fuck it, man! I'm 25 years old and I'm going <laughs> Jordan." Exactly. <laughs> you know. No, I uh, no. I mean, I, I grew up. My you know, funny story. My old man uh, when uh, when my older brother was born in '72. My old, my old man wrote a big. We grew up in PA. We're big Penn Staters. Like just it was kind of bred into me. But he wrote a letter to uh, to Paterno saying. Hey, I just had my kid born and, you know, saved most place on the 91 team. Yeah. And uh, Joe wrote back and I still have that letter. We had my, my we had my mom's uh, like a safety deposit box, a, a handwritten letter from Paterno saying I'll save him a spot. And uh, and then, of course, it never came to fruition. Oh, Obviously. Way to go, Jason. Obviously. Way to fail us. Well, maybe it was Sandusky that uh, yeah, 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 yeah. he was saving he that could, spot he for. He diddled by uh, Sandusky. That's right. Yeah. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe we did him a solid. Yeah, you did him a favor. <laughs> what you did is you, you prevented your brother from getting molested. From being diddled by Sandusky. Yeah, because yeah. that's a big yeah. deal, you know? Did you show up on, on, on the field with the letter? Like claiming your spot. Yeah. yeah. I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. No, it says it's a fucking contract. It's yeah, it's on. like to to the showers. <laughs> yeah. To you know, to the showers I'm first. We up. do all the interviews in the yeah. shower. Yeah, right. That's where we do all our, our business. Yeah. Um we can't say what you do in real life because you guys have super important jobs. Um protecting America. From Pelicans. From yeah. Pelicans. From Pelicans. Primarily from Pelicans, yeah. yeah. Um yeah, terrorists otherwise. Or just Walmart people. Are you, you know? saying that Pelicans are... Their mind? Yeah. You're saying that Pelicans also have terrorist what? affiliations? I'm done with the Pelican thing what altogether. About, um, I'm not going to stop, so you can just fucking well, get on board. But does, that oh, make, uh, does that make... Um, penguins then because they're black and white are they like the, the Rachel Dola's eyes of the, Dole, of, the yeah. of the, Dolezal, of the bird what, world name? yeah maybe you think they're faking know. the funk you think yeah, uh, yeah, penguins are well, and yeah. blackface yeah that's the they are the bird version of blackface Ooh. <laughs> where are we going is this we're going to do the whole podcast on this I, I hope, yeah, I, 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 hope I, no. keep bringing it back I'll, I'll bring it back to this that. every 10 to Post 20 Malone seconds probably Pelicans, exactly racist well, he's, Pelicans he's not he's not in blackface yet but if he keeps tattooing his face there's not going to be any white room oh, left no there's there. no there's not a lot of real estate left he got a new one right yeah what's this new tattoo he got two new ones one is the beer bongs and Bentley the last album he got that that logo tattooed the other one is a gigantic armored arm a medieval armored arm with a ball and chain, and it goes all the, the arm goes down the side of his face, right. and then the ball and chain goes all the way down to his chin and is underneath his chin. So you it's know? a knight carrying a mace, correct? And ooh, you know, I feel like it, once you go to your first face tattoo, like just all bets yeah. are off. You can just do whatever. You're done. Uh, by the way, same with Lil Wayne. I saw him the other day. Oh, yeah. He just put on a new album, and I was like. Motherfucker, how much room do you have left on your face yeah, for face it's, tattoos? It's, it's, at least sell sell advertising space there or something. I, look, you, you can. Um, that was a thing for a while, by it the was. way. Remember that? Yeah, oh, God. <laughs> I, who did, was it? Coca Cola. Somebody got tattooed on their yeah head on or their forehead, right? Yeah, forehead. Yeah, that was the craziest shit I've ever seen. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. is this? That's crazy, right? And then, and this huge. is the other one. It's like a fucking you, 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 like you a Malone? saw blade on his on the side of his yeah. face. What yeah. the fuck is the point of this? You're looking at Pelican or Post Malone right now. You're about Post Malone. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, weird thing. He's a great looking dude too. I don't I don't understand it. Um, but back to what I was talking about yeah. with with you guys. As far as Killcliff, this has been the biggest question of this, right? Yeah. Is Killcliff CBD? Because your jobs, you have to piss test, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and you don't with this, right? No, no. So if you read it, the back of the can here, shameless plug no for, uh, for Kill Cliff, yeah. CBD, 0% THC. But everybody's right. asked and they're like, hey, man, I'm a fucking first responder and I got a, I got a piss test. Right. I'm good, right? We've been telling everybody they're good because it's Kill Cliff. So. Right. All right. You can confirm it because you guys have to, how, how many times do you have to piss test? Um, so it's kind of, they say it's random. Um Seems like every time I get back from the Amster, Amsterdam, though, I, mm. I, I tend to be randomly picked. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't know number wise, and and uh, I know I have been, I have pissed after drinking, and, and I've had zero issues. At least they yeah. haven't let me know of an investigation yeah. that's going mm-hmm. on right Usually now. Usually bringing a, a warm All right, cool. cup of piss to yeah. use. Yeah, for- yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. obviously, in Dan and I's line of work, we don't get pissed tests because. Well, we no, do drugs every day. I'm high as shit right now. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to lie. That's right. why I keep talking about fucking pelicans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dan was smoking weed. <laughs> so, All that, that conversation and the fucking actually seeing the pelicans probably didn't even happen. You know, no. we went yes. to, uh, my wife and I went out to uh, Colorado like last year, and I'm, and I'm, I'm still in the reserves. Yep. And uh, so we went, and, and like the good parents <laughs> we are, we left our kids in the car while we went into the dispensary. 
And, uh, and my wife hasn't touched it in years, and mm. she's like, well, fuck it, it's legal out here. So we go in there, and yeah. I'm like, you know what, fuck it, I'll go in there. I can't do it yet. But Where is this at? Out in Colorado. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we go in, and the guy said, hey, can you do it? And I was like, I'm still in the reserves. I can't yet, but I'm, I'm retiring next year. Mm. You know, then, then we'll, we'll, we'll come back. He's like, well, we give military discount. He's like, even if you can't do it, we give the military discount mm. to try and, you know, get the guys hooked. So my wife's got a, a discounted, uh, what, she got brownies and gummies, I think. Did she take them with you? Like in front of you? Like, well, oh, yeah. Were you there? Yeah, yeah. She, uh, what, was her, what was her experience? Yeah, edibles. Coming back from not smoking or doing oh, bro. any kind of yeah. drugs for a while and then going straight to edibles <laughs> can be problematic. Oh, and, she's, and, she's, and you know what? And we had uh, one of these like little hipster chicks in, in yeah. the, behind the counter, and she's telling us about everything there. And like, this will get you this kind of high, and that'll get you that kind of high. And, and my wife and I are just kind of, you know, enjoying that this, this chick's kind of mm. dissecting these, you know, chemically. And we we're like, whatever, just... <laughs> My wife's like, you know, I'm just looking to chill after we're going. We're taking the kids skiing. We're gonna just chill afterwards. Mm-hmm. So she takes uh, the the girl says like, hey, if you you know you're you weigh a buck nothing. You, you're like you can't handle a lot and you haven't smoked mm-hmm. in a while. Take a half a gummy. So my wife's gonna hate that I, that I put this out there. Um, but what's her we, name? Full name? Government name? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go, Steph. This for you. Yeah. So she takes Steph. a half a gummy. And like she's like, twenty minutes go by. She's like, you know, this shit's not working. She's oh, like, I'm gonna take. Yeah, classic, yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic, you know where the story's going. Story. Classic every every store. So she takes the other, and we're staying at a uh, at an Airbnb uh, in one of these condos, and there's people above us. She takes the other half. What all hits mm-hmm. at once? And I, she's looking at me. She's like, I feel like you can see through my sin, my skin, and into my soul right now. And there's people like walking up the top, and it's like very, it's like like very light mm-hmm. tapping. She's like, is there a fucking herd of buffalo upstairs? What's going on? The kids have the TV on, like just on a regular volume. She's like, why are they listening so loud? <laughs> like her, every sense in her body was on super elevated, set, you know, yeah. heightened alert for What happens is it turns you into a superhero. I keep telling people this. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I tell sure. you what, That's why the government's so afraid of weed. I, I tell you, it, our rental car, we mm-hmm. got our, listen, you know, I went right from the military to government service. Mm-hmm. Dude, I just got a hot box on the, on the ride here. This thing, I don't know if the Mexican cartel rendered it but like before oh, yeah. us. Yeah. Sure. Dirty Mike reeks. and the boys, yeah. 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 It reeks of well, well, that's pretty much everywhere these Welcome days. Welcome to Wilmington. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or, yeah, right. or everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dude, California now? Oh, yes. Yeah, we were out in San Francisco, and it's in the airport. Like, yeah. It's literally in the airport. Yeah, yeah. So, Nuts, right? Yeah. It's crazy. Um, it's, every, it's big business. It's big yeah. business. I mean, look, so is CBD as well. I mean, CBD is a great one. At least, fuck, man, at least you're not high as shit. You don't know what you're getting into. Like, you can have a can of this and be like, oh, all right, great. I feel yeah. great, and I don't, I'm not really sure why. You take an edible that you don't know about, oh. good night, sweet Charlotte. <laughs> you don't know. You. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't know what the fuck is going on sometimes. Curious. Yeah. Because we've all got that edible story, right? The first time you do one, and you're like, oh, man. It's doing nothing. And then the next time, you know. Yeah, you gotcha. look like you've had a stroke. Your mouth is just <clears throat> drooping. Yeah. See, I don't have that edible story yet. I've been in the reserves for 24 mm. years and I, or in the Navy. And, I, and uh, um, I'm looking forward to it next year. I retire. Yeah. And, yeah. Ah, shit. Congratulations. We'll have man. a party. Thanks, come back down here. Yeah, and we'll, fuck yeah. yeah. I'll introduce you to a few things. <laughs> some <laughs> some, some yeah. friends I've met along the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to end up with face tattoos after. Exactly. You take a drug ride with Dan. Yeah, it's uh, been a long time. Shaving off time. your pubes and calling your grandparents. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. So, are your yes. grandparents still alive? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, they're going to get a phone they're call. They're going to get a phone call. About yeah. one year from oh, today. It's going to be collect. <laughs> Tell them to answer. I, can you even call collect anymore? Is that a thing? I, right. yeah. I saw a payphone. I saw a payphone the other day, and I called the cops. I'm like, "Hey, you got to get this shit out of here." Yeah, it's it's like, if you see someone on a payphone, they're up to no good. Yeah, like, there's I no see, legitimate. I see dudes in the airport on payphone. Oh, this yeah. shady motherfucker. Yeah. He's up to something. There's or no they're balling out. Like I was in a uh, uh, Asheville. Um, we went to this place called the Pinball Museum. Mm-hmm. It's fucking amazing. I'd highly recommend it. That's a fun town. It's a it's blast. And, but there's a like there's a wait list to get in. You're like, what the fuck is this? It's just it's all pinball machines and like really? weird shit. Yeah, and they have booze, so you can go around and play like you know every single pinball machine you ever. Yeah. There's a Metallica one that plays Metallica music, yeah. and you're like, all right, great. And then the, in the back is old Atari games, Nintendo, you name it. And when I walk back there, there's a payphone. There's an original payphone mm. booth in the back of this thing. And I was like, <laughs> man, I was like, what? What was the story with this? And they were like, yeah, we're Bill and Ted fans. And it's a it's a oh, sweet yeah. flex if you have your own payphone inside your place. And I was sweet. like, you know what? You're right. It is. Congratulations. Yeah. That's a big boy move. Yeah. And then today, um, I've always said the sweetest flex in life is if you had a flip phone still. Whenever I see yeah. somebody with a flip phone, well, I'm like, yeah. oh, Star-tech. they're rich enough that they don't need to fucking email, mm-hmm. text 
They don't need to do shit with anyone. Yeah. Um, that and they then, have a personal assistant for that, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, or you can be like Motorola is today. They just released their brand new Razer, and the, the screen folds in half. Yeah, I saw the testing on it. They, they released the testing on video, so yeah. people knew and it was like legit and it's not going to Because it didn't seem That's real, wild. so yeah. it just came out today. I, w- I don't know what the price point is. Will you look up the price point for, for it? For like, um, the Razer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, that, I heard pre-sale is going to be fifteen hundred, but yeah, fifteen hundred. Is that what it, it is? And then God Samsung released one today too. What? That's the same. It's a flip phone that's dual screen. So okay. You, you can they when you flip it, it can they can be independent if you're like if it's sitting at a ninety degree angle, or it can be one screen if it's completely flat. We're literally going backwards. We're going to go twenty five years from now. Our kids are going to carry that huge brick phone because it's going to have some sort of. Nostalgia too. Yeah. I'm going to get. Retro. Have you? Did you see that guy in the plane that had the tent around him? The other day, I, I, did, I, mean? I saw. Him. Yeah, so I'm yeah, going to yeah, get yeah. something like that, but it's a fucking pop up payphone. <laughs> like a, you actually put quarters. Yes, in. it's going to be like I get out of my car, go into the trunk, whip this thing out, and shake, and it pops up into a full size phone oh, booth. Yeah. I get in and make my call. Uh, Colin Farrell's probably around getting shot at somewhere. Yeah. Then I pack it back up, put it in the trunk, and get the fuck out of there. I like it. And that's going to be that. my flex on everybody. I'm going to stop traffic <laughs> to make a phone call. Excuse me. Excuse me. You fucking set this thing up. Cunts. I'm making a phone call. We uh, we do stand up at this dive bar in uh, in Wilmington, Delaware. Shout out to the Jackson. That, uh, shout out to the Jackson Inn. That's right. And they Is that what it's called? They, yeah. The Jackson Inn. Yeah. Um, Named most after exposure Stonewall they've ever Jackson, gotten right I there. But they don't have a uh, a phone that comes into the the. I mean, this place is it, it's 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 the dive of all dives. But they don't have a, a phone to come into the building, so they use a payphone as their number. So you'll hear the payphone ring, and, and the uh, the bartender will jump back there and answer it. If you want to make an outgoing call, she puts a quarter in. And and no not, fucking way. They're yeah. not trying to be cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is, they're that's not, this literally is, all they can that's, afford. That's what yeah. they got going on. What, what's what's it like? Look, I've done stand-up a, a lot of places. Yeah. Um, Wilmington, Delaware is not one of them. Dude, it's the what's, what's the crowd like there? Not a lot of Tuesday. Pelican jokes up there, probably. No, no. definitely they, not they, at all. You got to tread lightly with the Pelican. They don't understand. Yeah. They don't understand. Yeah, no. we have been doing, we've gone up on stage to do stand up, and uh, half the crowd's there for like a happy hour, and they literally look over you as if you are interrupting their happy hour because you're up yeah. there trying to do yeah. uh, some material, and they look over like, hey, uh, we're trying to celebrate uh, Jim's retirement. You guys mind shutting the fuck hey, up? Hey, fuck Jim, all right? <laughs> yeah. 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 No one's running their material by like Wilmington, Delaware before their Netflix special. <laughs> no. No, it is, it is. That is. That is not a test audience. No. no. You'll, feel like, but, you'll feel way worse. When yeah, you, but when something stage. hits... Then you know it's good. If you can get somebody to laugh at the Jackson Inn mm. in Wilmington, Delaware, then you know you, you might have a, a solid joke. What's the crowd there? Like 30, 40 people? Oh, if you're lucky. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, why? How, how many people? What we, it uh, depends. Probably uh, 20 max. <laughs> and, why and why again, are you doing stand up there just out of curiosity then? Uh, it's central between our place. Uh, it's no, I get there. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, typically, I, I mean, the point listen, of stand-up is to make is, a lot of people laugh. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, not no, just we, we, we like really small venues. Uh, too much laughing annoys us. So, <laughs> um, no, it, it's just close. And we'll just, it, it, we've done much bigger venues, obviously. It's just a place that we could go to and we know we can throw anything out there. You could go there uh, unprepared or just trying something completely different. Yeah. Sure. Um, and it's you don't if you bomb it doesn't doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Uh, let, let me ask you this: Do you Detroit. test out material for the podcast? No. Okay. No. This is just because you guys want to be stand up comedians. Uh, it's not even an aspiration like professionally. We just enjoy doing stand ups. We've we played some big venues up in up in Philly. We I mean we played we both played over in uh, over in the UK. Um, we both played it over on the West Coast, so we've done some bigger venues. But this is just a place that's central between our two houses. Every Thursday night they do this uh, open mic and. And there's some decent, you know, Philly area comedians mm. that come down, and uh, it's just an opportunity to test out new material. Bill Cosby is really a comedian funny. from Philly. He's really good at uh, what does he do? Rape, rape yeah, people. Yeah, he's really good at raping people. So if you need a, yeah. a role model, that's to yeah. for raping. That's, Congratulations, yeah. it's Sandusky, Cosby. Bill Cosby. Yeah, it's a gray area, and when I say gray area, I mean that that's gray is the last color they see before, before they, 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 yeah. they pass out. Before the, uh, uh, yeah. the ether bunny shows up. <laughs> <Before> <laughs> but, the but, but you asked like why we're doing, we do stand up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm going to guess it's the same thing as, as you guys as far as uh, making people laugh. Like I, there's a lot of things I wasn't good at, but uh-huh. there are times if I made people laugh, Sex. It, I, yeah, it, it, it always <laughs> I don't speak from experience. In, uh, yeah. Just but kidding. It, I do. I mean, that's like a drug, right? I mean, you're up there and when you do hit and things go great, it's the best feeling in the world. 
Sure. So, so it's like the jack scene is like banging your head against the wall. <laughs> And just knowing it's you're never gonna get a laugh. So if you go someplace else, it's even that much better. Yeah, so. that's really fucking funny. I uh, yeah, because I, I did it for eight years. Um, but the goal was, hey man, I'm gonna do movies or TV or yeah. whatever it is. Like I'm always curious when, you know, people live outside of LA mm -hmm. and they're like, hey man, I want to go down to the Jackson Inn and just see what it's like on a Thursday night. Yeah, I mean we're not spring chickens either. Like you grow up watching people do comedy, never really think I'm, I'm gonna do that. And then also, you know, like man, life's passing us by. We get, if, if you're going to do it, you got at some point you got to just jump in. So we start. I think it's great, by the way. Yeah. I think it's I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I just I, like I never hear it, and you never see people who are like, "Hey," because before we went on air, you were like, we, "I've got a family and all this other stuff," and I was yeah. just like, "Great, it's cool that your wife and kids like allow you to be like, all right, cool, you're going to go do stand up in Delaware." Yeah, they were cool with it, like the. For like the first couple months. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, we travel a bunch and then we come back. I'm like, hey, I'm uh, heading out. I'm doing a show. She's yeah. Like, oh, really? Yeah. yeah this is this one pay? No, no, it doesn't pay. No, it's, it's down at the Jackson Inn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you need us, call, call the payphone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you get free, free booze or anything there? Uh, no. So you're paying for that too. We better after this fucking plug. Yeah, yeah exactly. We're going to get a whole lot. The yeah. Jackson Inn. Now I'm curious. I mean, well, beers are cheap enough. You can, you can yeah, afford right. it. It's, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They have, uh, Old Milwaukee, Old Milwaukee Ice. Yeah, the they, some of the some of the some of the premier beers on uh, available, so you can afford them. God, the, the the place you're describing reminds me of this place I went to in uh, actually in Pennsylvania, uh, Punxsutawney. Um, I went to this dive bar in Punx Punxsutawney once. Punxy, yeah, yeah. Is that what they call I, it? There? I went to I went to college right out that way. Yeah, uh, that's the. You, do they call it Punxy? Yeah, when you're when you're a local townie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Punxy. <laughs> yeah, I went in. Some people were doing. It, it was like an open mic thing, and it was the same thing. Yeah. People were just pissed off at the bar that they were yeah. talking, you know, and they were like, "Games on." <laughs> Dude, games that, on that happens all the time yeah it does it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like it's fucking playoffs dude can you keep it down you're like yeah. oh, oh i'm sorry i'm here for comedy night my bad are they big boston fans there <laughs> <laughs> right. you think boston? where in punxsutawney uh, who, who do uh, they pennsylvania like uh, punxsutawney is in pennsylvania but it's kind of so that's that's further the, the home of the uh the, the, uh, the groundhog, that, groundhog. that yeah. beaver Shadow. or whatever the fuck yeah, 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 the yeah, beaver. Yeah. I think they should switch it out to a beaver because it's funnier and there's more room for jokes oh, totally. like everybody wants to retire fun. Punxsutawney Phil so let's retire him and, and then hire a beaver I'll tell you what it. for anybody that's sitting here listening if you're bored and you're looking for something to do on February 2nd go up on the night of February 1st it's a blast and it's all the college yep. kids go up the night before and they party all night long yes and then they you know stay up until 7am until this stupid fucking groundhog comes out and it's all like you know, it's, all it's all show it's, there's no like Real groundhog is like they shove this thing what? in the ass with a hot poker in the ass. It comes up and then it goes back down and everybody celebrates. But the college kids are up there all night and it's like one of those just out I went. The, did you go? I went one oh, year. Oh, yeah. Um, I was a big fan of Groundhog Day, the movie. So I was just like, fuck it. Um, somebody I used to date was from Jersey and it was a meeting point like at Ohio State. And uh, so I, I drove, met her and I was like, all right, let's do the let's do the fucking thing. Let's just let's see what it is. Raging all night long. And then. You know, it's so anticlimactic. They, <laughs> it pops out. Everybody cheers. You go back to drinking a little bit more, and then you black out by noon. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but it's it's fun. It's one day out of the year, and it's that that's their day right. to really turn shit up. And then they jack up all the hotel prices and everything. Oh, totally. Like, yeah. Here's here, this is this is what I think they should do. First of all, get rid of this fucking groundhog. That's a stupid animal, anyways. Get two beavers. <laughs> yep. Two beavers. Yeah. And put one of them in a jersey that says winter. And one that says spring, and let them fight to the goddamn like total death. Vic and whichever style beaver fighting, yeah. And then Michael Vick shows up and drowns the one that wins, <laughs> the one that stays alive. Just to me, you don't want to fucking carry it over to the next year because it gives yeah. them an unfair advantage. You want two, yeah, previously fresh. unmatched yeah. Beavers. beavers. Do beavers fight each other typically to the in real death? Life? No, I have no idea. I have oh, okay, no idea. there's only one. Way but that would be out. funny as <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one Put them in. Yeah, I mean, in. just feed them crystal meth and, and start showing them war propaganda. You could probably do that with any animal, though. I'm yeah. sure there's but I like there the beaver that are actually thing. have tried that with the groundhog. Yeah, maybe. I mean, look, if you give beavers a bunch of crystal meth and then show them like war propaganda and shit, they're going to fuck each other up. You oh, need, like, I've given beaver just crystal meth, but without that propaganda, they'll No, you need, the, you, you need the war propaganda. The whole, the whole the, thing's lost. Like yeah. a co the, the cockfighting, they actually put the razors on them, right? Yeah. yeah. No, they don't grow razors. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so gotta, I think, I think with the... Tape those on. Yeah, like, <laughs> right. what? Yeah. I don't Are think... you sure there's science behind I, that? You're yeah, I don't, I don't that. think I don't... Uh, we're able to grow metal yet in inside Mexico, of a body. Well, <laughs> um, maybe, yeah. 
Dude, we can strap up some some armory or some some type of weapon on a beaver. Oh what, yeah, what videos make what, it like what battle war bots. propaganda. You have them watch. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be Nazi war propaganda because that's what we all think of when we think of war propaganda. I do, um, but uh, you know, some other people think of Korean. It could be North yeah, Korea, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It'd be fine. It depends on where the beavers are yeah, from, I suppose. Do. Yeah, the you, Ruskies, they're, you, they're big yeah. on war propaganda. I you. guarantee you, though, if you start showing the Nazi war propaganda, the Pelicans are going to show up because they're all about that shit. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. Uh, we get some sponsors <laughs> to pay for this whole fucking shit wagon to be on the air. Yeah, people are paying us to do this. Fuck. Are they anymore <laughs> after this? Uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Finest mattresses on the planet. Everything is 25% off right now in the store. No other deals better than that. Mattresses, pillows, sheets, adjustable bases. You name it, they got it. On those adjustable bases, by the way, they got USB ports, flashlights, all that shit. So if you're in the middle of the night and you're fucking, uh, let's see, you, just, you want to just look at your lady. Boom, pop on that flashlight, you're good to go. Or look at your dude. I'm not discriminating, you know? You want to look at your man's asshole before you plug it? Go ahead, dude. Pop on the flashlight. <laughs> Let him know. You're about to go to Pound Town. Like one of those reading lights? Yep. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the yeah. one you can clip on your hat or clip on the book? You just hook it into the USB and just like... Boom. You go basically either spready, which is tough because you got to kick your legs back, or you go all fours. When I'm getting banged by my gay lover, I like to go mish um, and then put my legs up over my head so I can make oh, eye yeah. contact. And then I want my dick and ball slamming against my abdomen. And his abdomen. Getting... It's like a pendulum going back and yes. forth between yeah, the two. It makes us closer. Yeah. yeah. But for the inspection part, I would recommend going on all fours because you're going to get the best view of everything. You Correct. Don't, you don't want to crawl in there unless you know what's you on the don't. other side. Yeah, and you don't want to trust any other mattress than a ghost bed from ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Highly recommend a cover if you're doing uh, anything that Dan yeah. and I just recommended. <laughs> this is going to get a little wet. Uh, probably going to get a little brown on it. And uh, you want to yeah. make sure that you're going to uh, be able to clean that up pretty easily because the mattress is nice. You don't want to get any poopy juice in there. No. Do your um, butt fucking on a ghost bed. Folks, yeah. Uh, as always, uh, ghost bed's got a 36 month pay as you go program. No interest. That even works with a 25% discount. Crazy, but it's true. Crazy like two beavers watching war propaganda. <laughs> uh, next up, we got Vincero Watches uh, dot com. That's V I N C E R O. Um, I, look, I'm wearing this shit right now, dude. Boom, boom. Look at this. It's called the Blue Steel, by the way. It's yeah. nice. It's beautiful. You really craned your neck around to really get a, a nice. Uh, ooh, uh, Vincero Watches dot com forward slash Drinking Bros. Is yeah. Course, like, yeah. No, no, no. It's just go to Vincero Watches, buy some watches. Promo code drinking bros. Yeah. Fifteen percent off. New one, dude. It's fifteen percent off plus free shipping. Yes. At VinceroWatches.com. Affordable watches that are high quality. This shit's heavy too, man. Um, well, they like a lot of modern companies have looked at the marketplace and are like, why the fuck are people paying five, ten thousand dollars for this watch that we can make for way? less money yes so we're gonna do that we're gonna make it for less money and steal all their market share it's a very good marketing move and also passes the benefit of that on to the fucking user which yeah because nice. a lot of people watches sunglasses those are two things that everybody rips you off on overseas yeah. um they don't <laughs> not here at vincero go to v-i-n-c-e-r-o uh watches.com vincero watches.com use the promo code drinking bros for 15 percent off these fine pieces um, again, I got the blue steel. You got the, the rose-colored one with the rubber grip. I'm a little jealous. Uh, yeah, let me see what the name of it is. A little jealous. Because I was people keep asking and I wish me. I would have got that. Um, people keep asking me what the, uh, the name of it is. Yeah. Uh, um, blah, 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 blah. We use the word axing over ask, by yes. the way. Got it. I do what I want. This is America. Uh, goddamn right it is. Um, and so is Vincero. Go to VinceroWatches.com today. Promo I code can't Bros. 15% stop. off thinking about beavers watching war propaganda now well you, so you it's should. it's the rogue <laughs> the rogue collection and this is the one i have it's there the it rogue is. black and rose gold it's dope as fuck go rogue dude uh, anyways put it on your gay get one for your gay lover put it on his dick jeremy get it for jeremy um I don't james know, I don't know. if somebody if a grown man goes by james not jimmy not jim not just yeah. james. james james that man likes wieners All probably right. Right. I know a lot of Jeremy's who also take D's. You know what I'm saying? Uh, speaking of which, you guys ever taken a dick? Um, when I was young and you needed the money. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, who hasn't no. been hard up for tuition money? So, I mean, no. but with, like uh, outside of that, no. Voluntarily. So that's yeah. why you went to Penn State. You were hoping that that was still going to be in place. So you yeah. could pay down some that's of those student loans. Boom. Um, uh, 
Yeah, knock that one out of the park. So uh, back to <laughs> Beaver. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> De- definitely not back to Beaver. Back to your podcast. Sure. Yeah. Um, everybody's hopping in the podcast game right now. There is yeah. currently over 800,000 podcasts oh, out sure. there. Big boy number. 150,000 have started in the last year, yeah. right? Weird to hear out loud. Yeah. Uh, I always tell people this all the time because we, we get hit up a lot of like, hey, man, how do you start a successful podcast and all that other shit? Mm-hmm. Obviously, it starts with talent. Um, which you guys have none. Right, um, right. Is it like yeah. next to zero? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. uh, I'm totally kidding. Technical No, no but uh, if yeah. you're a company like Kill Cliff, you need to, I, every company should have a podcast for their own thing. Well, any company that primarily operates in digital, like yeah. if, you're sell, if you're a direct-to-consumer right. product, you need to fucking have a podcast. Part yeah. of your digital strategy, in yeah. addition to like, like people talk about just posting content on yeah. LinkedIn or whatever, you have to have a podcast. It's audience and, cultivation, right? The that's whole the thing. new blog, right? Yeah. That the, the old way to, to fight the SEO mm-hmm. issues used to be on a blog, but mm-hmm. now it's it's getting getting a podcast, translating and put the putting the content out on your blog, yeah. but also putting it up, right? And letting people see your personality. <laughs> they want to see more. Than well, just, now it, now it, you get the double benefit of it because not only are you putting information out there that's getting indexed, but you're putting information on a Google platform, YouTube. Right. Yeah. So it's getting indexed directly by the primary uh, provider of that that uh, that stream. So mm-hmm. you can't you can't beat that as far as search engine optimization goes. You really can't. Yeah. Uh, not we, that we're trying to talk anybody else into starting a show. If you haven't yet, you probably shouldn't. It'll it'll fail. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. well, ours was the last one to get on. I yeah, you're. I think you guys got it just under the window. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You got, got the the dual beaver discount. I believe is what they call yeah. it. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> dual yeah. How is it? Do you guys have guests on? <laughs> yeah. We you do. do, yeah. yeah we've, do you we've enjoy got, it? Oh, uh, uh, dude, it's, it's awesome. It. I mean, just just sit around and, and shoot the shit with people. I mean, you guys obviously know way more than we do about it. But I mean, some of the conversations are are pretty natural. Some are, you got to pull a little bit more just to get it out of them. But uh, dude, it's some are fucking brutal. Some we don't air. Yeah. Oh, I don't blame it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where I'm just like, man, that dude, was this that was terrible. We've, this one doesn't go on. Uh, then we'll know. Yeah. You'll know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you guys will definitely go on. But uh, so, some were were just like, oh my god, man. Yeah, we, we scrapped were lucky. One a week ago. I'm sorry. Um, I was gonna say we were lucky that we partnered up with Kill Cliff at a time where they were looking to transition their their old mo and the and the old style that they did the. Uh, their podcast where they were just looking to just inject a, a new flavor to it. And we just happened to get lucky to partner up with them. Um, if we were trying to do a podcast and start and get out on our own, get the exposure, yeah. we'd have a, it'd be a, you may be a tough road ahead, but it's uh, hard, man. Cause to yeah. monetize it and all that shit, like it, it's tough and yeah. you know, develop a following and everything else. You have to have a huge social media following typically. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and we had none of that. So the fact that we were able to jump on with them, it, it's, it's, it's been huge and they, they've been cool. They let us pick guests a lot. So we, we've gone in and we've, no, we like comedy. There's, you know, we're not we're not um, we're not stuck doing the stuff they were doing before, as far as guess why. So yeah. we just brought in people. We thought, hey, this guy's interesting. Yeah, yeah. we just had uh, we just had Jake McLaughlin on the uh, mm-hmm. the star of uh, of uh, NBC's uh, Quantico, mm-hmm. and also uh, an Iraq War vet. Um, he was there on the initial push in Iraq. So yeah. he's got this great. He actually he played. Uh, he was in that movie Warrior too. Remember that? Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I actually Big watched that, that last night. That's one of the best what movies. Was he, in that? he was. He's the fucking uh, the guy that's deployed to Iraq at the time that recognizes Tom Hardy's oh, character. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, he's got a he's, movie coming out with uh, Kathy Bates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a really good actor. Uh, a super nice guy too, from what I hear, from what you guys say. Yeah, and, and that one is just. I mean, it's just who you know. So we, we mm-hmm. work with a guy that was deployed with him, and that's how we got the, the contact. He put us in touch with him, and this guy was – Jake was awesome. I mean, I, I, by the end, like, he, he would have stayed on for four hours, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, and that's great because, look, there's, there's episodes where the show just goes by, and you're like, right. fuck, man, I can talk to this guy for nine hours. There's others where you're fighting for that hour, and you're just like, oh, man. So what we're, we're trying to – the hard part is getting <laughs> – Getting like not that polished story they've told a thousand times. Yeah, yeah. You know, let's, you know, we're, this isn't like an Instagram like <laughs> their story. We we want to actually find out something they haven't said before. So that's that seems to be like the hard part. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, we found drugging them helps. Yeah. Uh, uh, did you guys give them some drugs? We did. Mm-hmm. And what'd you give them? Um, <laughs> Coke. Yeah. <laughs> right. Some yeah, yeah. Well, we started with a, a chokehold. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And if then they enjoy it. You know, you know it depends if you're. If they if they resist, then you choke them from behind. But if they like it, you, know, you come from the front. You know, of course, because you want to see you want down. to see the eyes. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want them to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I know. I, coke and then a nice choke. 
Uh, just and, and just enough where they're yeah, like yeah. until you come and like, it's like <laughs> and then war propaganda <laughs> yeah those things and, and that order seems pelicans sick. and war propaganda and we're like do you subscribe to this yes, yes or no yes <laughs> or no great <laughs> get on the podcast is tell it, your story is it okay if i come <laughs> is it okay if i fucking come say my name we have electrodes yeah hooked up their genitals if they start to tell the same story they've told before we just hit the button under the uh under the desk we, we don't we don't get to do this uh like in we've had a couple in studio so a uh -huh. lot of it is by video which i think you just lose some over that but um yeah I, it's tough because yeah. you know when you're at, at the video like you don't know what they're doing on the other end when you're just like oh man dude um I, there was a guy that we had on i'm not gonna i'm gonna say who it was it's yeah. very very famous and i i he was eating a uh, kfc 10 piece Oh hell yeah! Right out of the bucket, and I could yeah. I could hear it. You know what? Honestly, I know this is fucked up, but I promise you, this is real. I will be ordering KFC now just because you mentioned it right there. I that's, know, I know, right? That's how powerful our show is <laughs> at this point. I I we influence ourselves to buy right. shit yeah. now. I love, I fucking love KFC. I fucking love it too. I'll, yeah. I'll still get wet with KFC. Like get Popeyes and all that stuff. You can get fucked with that shit. Yeah, the Popeyes oh, chicken sandwich. Yeah, no, yeah. it's Chick Fil A and it's KFC. Get fucked with all your other bullshit. Yes, unless it's a mom and pop shop, then we can negotiate. We can but it's dude uh, one of those buckets of chicken man from kfc greasy as shit i'll eat oh, three thousand yeah. calories at one time and Oof. like 1700 milligrams of sodium i don't give a shit yeah. i'll die i don't care the I'll best die. the best but homeboy was eating that and like yeah. you can just hear him licking his fingers and i'm just i'm like oh my god dude and i want to say something i want to call you him out to. obviously if it was in I person can't. if it was in person it would be funny yeah, yeah, yeah. But because it's remote, it makes it weird. Like, if it's in person, you'd be like, dude, are you still eating that fucking chicken? Like, it would be an ongoing gag for the whole show, and it would be funny. But if, and like, if you do it remote, it's like, oh my God, dude. Like, he, don't try to hide. If you're going to do like that, don't try to hide it. Everyone can hear you sucking the grease off the ends of your fingers. One yeah. of our, uh, I was going to say, one of our, our, one of our first interviews um, was with uh, Mike Rodriguez. And I'll say his name because we had fun with him while he was happening, but he had just come from working out. So he's like out of breath. And we told him like what time we were going to call him and do the, uh, the, the Skype call. Uh -huh. And he's on the phone, like talking to us out of breath. And he's kind of walking around and it's so dizzying to watch. Like, cause he's got the camera going all over the place. And we're like, Hey, is this uh, still a good time? Oh yeah. Yeah. This is a good time. I just got finished working out. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's do the podcast. <laughs> so we had, we had a chance, we had an opportunity to bust his chops a little bit about the fact that, you know, that that was sort of at his, least you uh, guys are kill cliff though and he's working out yeah yeah, yeah right yeah, yeah there's right. the association there we yeah had, uh, we had uh, a friend of ours this guy jj <laughs> ricasa he's a world champion like shoot, shooter like competitive shooter uh -huh. and uh he had a lapel mic but it was covered like his his thing went mm, over sure so at least here you're like hey man put the mic close to your face everything like, we can't really hear you and you can say that how many times four or five and then it's just awkward yeah, yeah so yeah. we just let him go with it and um I think we're just going to add our own voice in. Like, we're going to add dub voice in. over. Yeah, for his, everything he's You should dub uh, war propaganda over it. Yeah. <laughs> and just see if Beaver starts showing up. <laughs> of course it will. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rent. I'm going to get a permit and rent some space here downtown and just start playing war propaganda and see how many Beaver show up. You should. There's a, so there's a bar in uh, New York City. Speaking of this, there's a bar in New York City. Um, that, oh yeah, the one we went to with Churchill playing. So I, yeah, I yeah, took yeah. you because my, dope, my yeah. agent had taken me there in New York, and he goes, uh, "Hey man, just kind of giving you a heads up. There's a tripwire when you walk into the bathroom, and it plays only Winston Churchill speeches." So he's like, "It's kind of weird, whatever." And I was just like, "He's like, that's kind of the vibe of the bar." And I thought he was fucking with me. I go into the bathroom as soon as you open the door, and there he was, looking over the field. We did this, and we won the war. And you were just like, "Oh fuck, that's real." Yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. I found myself in the bathroom for like 15 minutes just listening to Churchill yeah, I went, speeches. I could not take a shit no. like trying to play Angry Birds while Ch Winston Churchill's chirping in my ear. Sucks. It's it's actually oddly soothing. So <laughs> It really I relaxes your butthole. Yeah. Yeah. I challenge anyone to go to New York, just look up the bar Churchill's, and then go go to the bathroom, take a nice fucking hearty deuce, right. and, and tell me Winston Churchill doesn't yeah. talk you out of a, a one wiper. Because, I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. you get nervous, pinch it off, and you're like, mm -hmm. fuck, I'm going through the whole roll. Yeah. With a with a Churchill shit like that, because it's like one a wiper. It's like no matter how many Swish. times you wipe, it's like there's a marker sticking out of your butt. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like why is there the still stuff on here? This is not yeah. working out. There's a turd poking out of me. Do you stop at a certain number? Like, no. Do you like sixteen? I like, stop I'm when gone. my asshole's clean. <laughs> I so do yeah. I. But like, there's times when where the toilet it's... paper accumulates so high that it touches. No, your I butt. flush like, oh, eight or nine yeah. times. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, do you? Yeah, and I, you know. You got to, man. Come on. I, I'm with you. So, like, I won't go out if there's... I, 
Jared, sometimes you know Jared, you got to take a shower. Jared, yeah, there's sometimes where I'm just like, I'm calling it, dude. This is this is. I'm I mean, enough's this. enough. I'm, no I'm on wipe fourteen. I'm gonna go yeah. ahead and hop it on in the shower. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can see Jared though, just kind of taking one sheet, wiping, and then just bouncing. Whatever's there is there. Maybe there's this old wives' tale about how you're supposed to wipe your ass with one sheet of toilet paper. Do you guys remember this? No. So you, one one square. So you that's poke, not wise. It's a you, tail. That's you, no you, wise. You tail. like fold it in half and tear a, a hole out of it and put the hole through your finger or your your finger through the hole and then you stick your finger up your ass and then wipe around in there with the paper on it and then you pull it out and use the little piece that was left over to wipe your finger off. I don't feel like you got that from a, a reputable source. On no, the that no. Someone made that up for sure. <laughs> but it's. I guarantee you I'm not the only person that's heard this nonsense. This has been propagated by retards for years now because I heard it when I was a child. Then no. I heard it again when I was in the military from some old salty dude. Well, like, speaking no. of being in the military, and I don't know what made me think of this, but uh, when I, I was over, I got recalled and went to Iraq in, in 2016, and uh, I was kind of uh, I, I was uh, startled by the number of cocks that were drawn inside. <laughs> it was me. Was it drawn to scale? Like I felt like no. I was the only one who went to take a shit in the the base bathroom who and didn't bring a black sharpie with me. Oh, you're talking about in those? No, I drew yeah. cocks all over Baghdad, there were, big yeah, orange ones. Yeah, there was cocks all over the uh, at the Baghdad in scale, Airport. huh? Well, I don't know. I, don't, I'm, I mean, I don't know. There was if they I were, feel, I was, I, I was, uh, I was on the low end. I of, feel like uh, that's one thing though. of the gene pool there. I feel like that's one thing that everybody can draw. Like, if you just hand any random human being, at least in America, a fucking Sharpie and say, hey, draw a dick, yeah. Yeah. draw a dick. dick. Everybody's got their own version of it, but everyone knows how to draw everyone, a dick. Everyone can draw a dick. It's pretty simple shape. Yeah. You stand up or sit down to wipe? I stay, I stay seated. You do stay Kick seated. Kick one cheek up? I mean, when I was seven, yes, I stood. Okay. I what, Like, you, I watch my kids now. And stand my, up. I have two boys. One you stand seven, up? And I'm a tall now? guy. You do you now? Uh, I'm six, three and a half. So, like, to me, it's fucking tough, man. Like, I can... My legs are, it's, it's, oh, yeah. I'd have to really get in there. And, you know, usually, because I, I tried wiping sitting down. But I noticed you're going from the front. What are you, are you scooping? Yeah, What's he's that? scooping, yeah. Scooping, yeah. Noticed, he bends over it. He, he bends I, I over at the waist all the way down. <laughs> yep. And then Bend goes front to back. Or back go, to front. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't go from the back. Because honestly, it's easier to clean That's your, your balls in your butthole. Correct. Correct. So if you get shit on your nuts, you can just drop them in the sink and wash that shit off with hand soap. Boom. If your asshole's still dirty, that's a whole. You got to get in the shower for that. Yeah, you yeah, get in the shower. Yeah. Or you so just I, don't put the, the the toilet seat lid down, and you just can you can flush when you're down there. It's like a, a built in uh, bidet. bidet. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. guys but been then, in Japan before? No, I've never it's been in so Japan. Legit, dude. Their toilets there, it's a whole nother level. They all I, have like very advanced bidets on them, right? I won't use a bidet because then you've got to use a, a towel to wipe, right? I'm telling this thing, it's got. You're I'm not, still wet though, right? Yeah, yeah, but I, I think the new version, like 2.0, might even have a dryer on it. I'm not yeah, sure. A little, ah. a little gun that shoots like baby powder up your butt. This is, you, you sit down and, and there's about 30 buttons uh, and you just start pushing, right? Sure. And at first, you're, it's startling. And then yeah. at some point, you just go with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, it's wonderful. How do you dry off your anus, though? Now or back then? Because it's changed. No, that, on the bidet. There's a dryer on there. Yeah. So there is a dryer on the toilet. The yeah. new ones. So. All right. Now, if you're going old school, then you, you gotta use a towel. You gotta use something. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. That's too much. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I like, I'm not gonna use a. I, the one time I used a bidet was in a hotel, like a fancy hotel. Yeah. Mm. And I look, you look around, and you're like, all right, well, sweet. Now my asshole's still wet, and I don't know if all the brown's gone. You know, you well, don't. if all the brown went down, and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I'd use a fucking towel. And then I'm like, all right, great. Well, then the maid's gonna come in, clean up my shit towel. Like, what am I going to do with this? Because you can't use toilet paper. Are you a savage at that point? I mean, like, it's... Well, you can't use toilet paper. No, it's gonna, that's going to get... That's going to disintegrate inside your asshole. Mm -hmm. Then you're, you're dealing with a paper mache type sitch. And it's like, I don't want Russian dolls, you know, <laughs> made you, out of my, my right. wet asshole right. that are just... It keeps This is up. just... Really, this could all be solved by uh, waxing or shaving your asshole. Well, I don't have a lot of hair anyways. Well, then you shouldn't have to worry too much about this. I mean, the bidet should get it. It should get it. But it's not, I don't think technology is there. I've said this a million mm -hmm. times. Technology is not there yet. And uh, I don't trust it. I don't want any fucking form of shit in my pants the rest of the day. Nobody does. No. No. I, I, I don't think you're alone on that one. I Dude, when like I, a universal. Yeah. Uh, 
When I see a bidet, like uh-huh. and I'm in a nice hotel and I see a bidet, I don't even I don't even know how to go about what's like like where as far as standing, the hole doesn't look big enough. Like for like, I, so I just steer clear. I okay. mean, I literally steer clear. I don't get too close to it. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You can't. You ever go elbows in the back of the rim? No. No. Uh, Explain okay. it to me. Uh, it's when you, you you go reverse on a toilet, so you just you know put your elbows on the back of the yeah, the, the, the thing, and then so you can put your bowl way. of cereal up there in the morning, correct? Mm-hmm. And an iPad, maybe hang it on the wall right there, and you could watch fucking first take on ESPN and eat cereal while you're dumping out. And then you yeah, save time. I don't think I've backwards. ever been that hungry that I was like, you know, uh, this bowl of cereal has to be eaten right now. Look, it's all about economy of effort. It, it is. is. You know, that's I don't have a whole lot of time, extra time during point. the day, which is not true. I have a ton of extra time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, that last. <laughs> but if I didn't. This is what I would do. I you brought come, in a cup of coffee. It's once called batching. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's cool. batching. You combine similar tasks. Yeah. I mean, eating and shitting are similar tasks, whether you want to admit it or not. You guys, you guys have traveled quite a bit too. Like, have you ever seen uh, a housekeeper carrying um, the bed uh, comforter down the hallway? No, they don't. They don't clean. That thing never comes out of no, there. No, never. I, I always take it off whenever I go into hotel rooms and just drop it on well, the floor. Well, hotel rooms don't even use it anymore. They use a top sheet and then they use two like bed sheets yeah. with a top sheet in between it and then other real sheets and then the fucking mattress cover. It's weird not, now. Not the Fairfield Inn in <laughs> Wilmington, uh, North Carolina. Is that yeah. where you guys stayed? No, they. Uh, there's a lot of people who still use a uh, cover. On, you know. Oh yeah, there's people that yeah that won't even. Won't no, even those touch things this. are soaked in blood and cum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I'm sitting naked on one, like Sorry. watching TV, I contemplate like I've never seen one of these come out of. You definitely had AIDS. Here's what I know. <laughs> I know what I've done yeah. in those hotel rooms, and I'm a somewhat respectable human being. Same. And every time I'm in one, I pound off a minimum of three times, probably right. Because there's one before sleep, and I and I, and I usually know. don't get out of bed without pounding off twice. That's my fucking <clears> deal. So I know that. Even on a one night stay, I've probably jerked off three times in there. I don't want to know what normal human beings have done or less than normal. Because right. yeah. I think I'm pretty normal. Yeah. I, I, I think it's the first time someone's ever uh, wanted to show Beaver uh, uh, war propaganda and then within a five minute period said, I'm, I'm a respectable human being. This is just like. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, that's let's, let's just move on. But yeah, have you ever. <laughs> like, I, I fuck up a hotel just to do it because I'm in there and I figured everybody else has. I'm just like, it's right, like a rental car. It's broken window <laughs> theory. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. yeah. I had a meeting in New York. You need community was, policing. Yeah. I, I had a meeting in New York and it was, everything was sold out and I get stuck in this. There was one room left. Oh, shitty. It was the worst. All, it, it was the Pennsylvania hotel. I remember the name of it. It was uh, right above the train station, right across from Madison Square Garden. And I got in. It was the only room. It looked like it was fucking haunted or, you know, <laughs> right. some spooky right. thing. You could see like eighteen different layers of paint. Yeah, you know they just painted over the old paint. Oh and yeah, just like oh Christ. And my topper was over by the nightstand. Like somebody's toenails had trimmed their toenails over there, and their like the toenails were over there. I was just like fuck this, man. I and I was only there for one night, and that was it. I had one meeting, and I was out. I just jacked off in the lamp. <laughs> <laughs> I just jacked off all over the lampshade because I was like if. I figured everybody else had fucked up every other part of this room. Nice. What's the one thing that no one's ever do? And yeah. I was like, I'll just jack off. Well, you know, the, the light bulbs in those lamps, those are for external use only. I, you know, I, I read that. Um, a lot of people don't know that, before apparently. Before I put it into my asshole. Yeah, uh, if you're, you know, by the cool. way, if you're going to jam a light bulb in your ass, go metal part first. You don't want to go glass first. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's hard, so really hard to get out. Yeah. But yeah, just, I, just, so at the, at the Pennsylvania Hotel, I don't know what room number, I didn't write it down, but uh, Doesn't matter. No. Yeah. Yeah. know that, that a man has jacked off on the lampshade just to do it. I was so pissed about everything else. The TV didn't work. The heater was on and it was the middle of summer and I was like, fuck you, dude. Yeah. No, I'm, you're saying I'm, that to the lamp. Uh, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, yeah. you were yeah. like saying that to the lamp. Like, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I, you pretentious. Fuck prick. you, Dad. You're the only yeah, one right. that's got. Think you're fucking getting away without a, a load on you? Yeah. 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 So I just left a load on the yeah. lampshade there at the at the Pennsylvania. The remote hotel. was like, get him. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I don't trust the uh, the soaps. Why is that? Because did they? Let's say somebody stayed in that room before me. And they didn't use any of the soaps, or it looks like they didn't. Did they actually replace them? Because oh, yeah. you could fucking pound off into those soaps too. And then I'm rubbing cum. Oh, all you're over not my talking face. about bar soap. You're talking about like into the bottles. Yeah, the, because they're, oh, the most, bottles. most yeah. places have bottles now. The bottles right? conditioner. Yeah. yeah, that's work. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> it is, but I mean, it I'm is. But assume. when boredom sets in, congratulations. Like, yeah. if you were to ever ask me in my adult life, would I jack off in a lampshade? 
Probably not. But here we are. Here we are. Oh, yeah. Eight, 17, 18, yeah, you bet. I would have fucking, I've done worse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I fucking almost carried myself in a hotel room, you know? <laughs> Paint myself up like a beautiful little Japanese girl. <laughs> That's it. And then mm, strangle bait in the closet. Um, well, you do what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you do what you got to do to get off. But uh, you guys married with kids? Yeah. Yeah, we both uh, we have both uh, married, both three kids. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah man. The third one's too much, right? Uh, Be honest about it. Um, third three, one? Three is too hard. Three. Dude, it's it's no, by difficult. That point, yeah, by that point, you're, just, you're, already, you're already beat down. Yeah, you've given up on life. You've, you've <laughs> given up. Or so it's like one more kid. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah, our yeah, third yeah. guy, for us, our third guy's awesome. He's like the rule follower. He keeps the other two in line. Really? <laughs> yeah. How old are your kids? Uh, 11, 9, and 7. Shit. Every two years, huh? Yeah. What was that and on done. purpose? Um, did you get snipped up? That's about how often I got laid. So get you, you, you got your shit ripped out afterwards? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did yeah. Get, did you get a V-sec? Yeah. Did That's, it take? You know, the funny thing is uh, my wife my wife actually scheduled it. So we left the hospital like February uh, like 5th with our, uh, our youngest, and mm. she called the uh, urologist that day and was like, I'm scheduling my husband because I'm, I'm fucking done having kids. Yeah. So I went in really? there. Yeah, That's yeah. what I'm going to do. As soon as the kid pops out, I'm going to call the doctor. Like, hey, rip our shit out right quick because this isn't happening again. Well, that's the crazy part. My wife uh, had a C-section, and I was like, well, they already have you open. Like, why don't they just tie your tubes? And she's like, Give her a hysterectomy. Well, this is, like, this is no shit. This was her response. Is, she goes, well, what if something happens to you? It's, it's, it feels so final, like, if I get it done. I said, I, that's what I said to my wife. And I was like, y- you're not going to get your tube tied because you're banking on a, my possible untimely demise? I was like, that's, yeah. that's not how this works. Yeah. And uh, apparently that's how it works. Yeah, so, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I said, look, yeah, I said the same thing to my wife. She's, she was like, why don't you get a VSAC? And I was just like, no, dude, um, I, I don't. Cause it's, that's part of the power for me yeah. where I want to know that I can fucking bring a, bring a life yeah, into the world yeah. through my penis. Mm. And I'm like, I'm not going there and getting, yeah. getting snipped up just so you can take my power away. Yeah. Well, I, I go, you. what happens if you fucking die? I'm telling like, well, your kids are alive. And I was like, what if they're with you? Then I got to fucking repopulate. With, you know, yeah, with reboot. like two 20 year olds, and that's yeah, work, for yeah, me. exactly. You know, that second wife is going to be 22 years old, she's going to want a kid, yeah. You know, I'm not going to remarry a fucking 44 year old, like, <laughs> no, crazy. Now, nah, you got to go six, half that 16 age. or what, or well, no, 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 no. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta be honest, guys, I've been watching videos of beavers fighting for the last 20 yeah, years. That's, <laughs> that's true, that's a true story. Um, if you could turn that around, he's no, watching beavers, no fighting. one needs to see this. I host and I have a nonprofit that I'm very proud of, Fathers Without uh, Boundaries, and so, I mentor sorority girls. That's that are kind of you. It's, you twenty know, to twenty-two we years old. We all find our way to give back. Twenty to twenty-two years old, and I'm that's where I'm going with uh, the second wife, where it's just like, hey, uh, I've got money. Let's yeah. fucking make this happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know you don't want to work. I looked at your Instagram thing, and it said you love to travel. You know, I'm a fucking job, so yeah. let's hop on board and figure let's, let's shit out. Better, yeah. better me than some Persian businessman. Exactly. Because I'm not going to do, I'm not going to, I'm right not going to hit you. It is, yeah. Probably. I mean, I might pee on you a little bit, which is common over there. What else? Yeah. That's also But that'll be on accident. 50. I'm not going to do it yeah. on purpose. We had a Instagram model. On, oh, fuck. I probably shouldn't say that. Ah, who gives a shit? We've been drinking. Um, we had, we had one of those Instagram people on the show one time, right? Smoke show, this girl crazy hot yeah and it was one of those like it was one of those girls you risk it all for we were like oh boy i could I can go all in for this one right anywho's i looked at the guy who booked her and i was like what's what's her fucking story how does she make money you know and he was like yeah she goes over the middle east once every three four months hundo yeah private plane they give her a hundred grand and, and enjoy the weekend i was like no shit what they do over there, those fucking princes and bullshit, is uh, they'll scroll through American Instagrams, pick out the hottest ones, and then hit up their agents. And it's like, hey, man, would you like to come over for a hundred? Yeah, I, I heard grand? some rumors of some flight attendants doing the exact same thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like on their layovers? Yeah. because Making I see, a little side cash? Yep. Yep. You know. Why not? Hey, man. Stews. You yeah. call them stews? Do I? Yeah. No. That's what they call themselves. Yeah. They do. Now it... you want spit in your coffee. No, they, <laughs> internally, they refer to, even the males refer to themselves as stews. Yeah. It's some kind of industry <laughs> jargon. It's weird as shit that survived after all this nonsense. You guys ever had any, like, 
By the way, never had a coffee mm. coffee on a flight. Um, I feel weird if I don't if I'm not drinking on a flight. Like mm. it feels foreign to me. Um, it's the worst hangover I've ever had. I think it was after like time like a good one on on an airplane. Yeah, yeah. And then landing, I was on my way to uh, Turkey, mm-hmm. and I stopped in Germany. I drank. I drank to Germany. And yep. I drank from Germany to Italy. Yeah. Were you on and military birds or civilian birds? I, I was. I was for the military, but right. it was yeah, yeah. on a civilian bird. Um, uh, and then I didn't move in Turkey for probably three days. It was really? I was, it was bad. Really bad. Yeah. I, I've, I have to drink on a flight in particular. Anything over an hour. It's like, hey, man, I got to have, have something right. in me to Take deal with this fucking off. shit. Yeah. yeah. Not the edge. Oh. Just, just Commercial air it. travel is just the worst yeah. thing the worst. in the world. Yeah. And I got my cock growth by TSA. Uh, I saw that. I on saw the last yeah, trip. Yeah, yeah. I, I posted it. it. Yep, yep. I posted it and I was just like, hey, and it ended up getting, I think, like 60 or 70,000 views total of this guy who grabbed my cock. Yeah. And that was the only time I had stopped a TSA person. I was like, hey, man, that was too much. Like, he full, I mean, it was a full grab. Like, he was grabbing a broomstick. And I was like, yeah. hey, man, I'm with my wife. And it's, we were in Vegas. It was like one in the morning. I, I, oh. no, no lie. The flight was at 1.18 in the morning. And we were just trying to get out of Vegas. That's all we were trying to do. And I, that was the first out. And there was no one in line at all, TSA. And I fucking clear and all that shit. And I'm like, none of it did any good. That was the first time I lost my shit. And I was just like, that's enough. Has and, anyone, did anyone reach out to you after that? Like anyone from that side? No, but I, like I've had some bad flight experiences with a pilot in the show. Uh, a couple months ago on a flight uh, from Atlanta, he got fucked up at the LSU game. That college football <laughs> yes. playoff game. Didn't they called him like a hundred times and like the the people the staff there at Delta were remarkably honest about it they were like look we've called him like a hundred times he's not answering five hours later they had to bring in a a new pilot um, and then the engine blew out on the runway well I documented all of it on Twitter and somebody from a, one of the editors from like Axios or whatever the fuck it is picked it up because I had my kid with me yeah so I was posting like these like arms of an angel pictures of my child. <laughs> yes. Like I put him in pajamas inside the airport. And I was like, since we live here and I'm like fucking Tom Hanks in terminal, might as well let him fucking jam, put his right. jammies on right. and enjoy his goddamn life. Um, and that caught on and was like a little viral thing. And Delta hit me up and like immediately that night when I landed and they were like, we'll pay for everything. Oh, that's like, nice. Wow. It is. And it isn't. I mean, I still, I was like, cool. I still had to get a hotel a rental car and all that other shit. Yeah. And they were like, <laughs> I had an instance where they were they were just brutally honest. We're coming in for a landing, right? And, uh-huh. and right before we land, um, you just you feel them hit the thrusters, and we take back off again. I mean, we're real close to the ground at this point. And he comes across intercom, and he goes, um, "Ladies and gentlemen, you can come in uh, a little too high, or you can come in a little too fast. You cannot come in a little too high and a little too fast at the same, at the same time. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was great. I mean, everybody's like, oh, I get it. Yeah, I mean, everyone everyone fucks up driving sometimes, so." We're going to do it again. That's really fucking yeah, funny. Was, yeah. <laughs> the worst flight I was on, well, it was a co- there was a couple. Like one a stewardess bounced her head off the fucking. Oh, boy. Oh, real turbulence. Knocked, knocked unconscious, yeah. And it was, they had to pull her, you know, off oh, to the shit. side. And it was yeah. like, Jesus Christ. And then there was another one with, uh, Bra- I was sitting next to Brandy, the singer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, South by, it was a Southwest flight. So I don't want to say like, oh, we were, I was in some fancy plane. I was not. I was on yeah. a Southwest flight from Vegas. That L.A. to Vegas flight is like 40 minutes. It's easy, no big deal. And they had gotten like maybe, it looked like 50 yards from the runway in L.A. And they were like, oh. And then they just jerked the plane and yeah. ripped it around. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? They were like, it's too windy. We can't land. We're so, taking you back to Vegas. I mean, people fucking lost their minds, obviously. Whatever. It's a four-hour drive. Rent a car. Wow. It is, but it was late. Yeah, it was yeah, late at right. night. So like, yeah. we got stuck, and they were like, look. We'll give you a voucher for the Westward Ho or the Circus Circus or whatever yeah. the fuck. Something was shitty. Oh, and I was yeah. like, Yo. Circus Circus is right across the street, though, from uh, Battlefield Vegas where you can shoot machine guns it and is. drive yeah, tanks. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, oh, really? it's close. All this was, was closed. It was yeah. a Sunday night. So, <sighs> so it, it, I ended up in a piano bar at uh, New York, New York. The oh, yeah, that place piano is bar, right. yeah. And then I, I left them a message, and, uh, drunk as shit. Just posted that video and just said, this is what you made me do. <laughs> this is what you made me do. <laughs> this wasn't a choice. Yeah, you think I wanted to listen to fucking 19 Billy Joel songs tonight? <laughs> no, I did not. Brandy, if Brandy wasn't on that flight, you guys are landing. Southwest doesn't want Brandy dead on their, on their airplane. Mm. If she wasn't on that, you guys were landing regardless. Right? Yeah. That's what I think. You're all expendable. Yeah, so, yeah. so let me ask you this. Since we're talking about that, the Kobe sitch, right? Yeah. With yeah. that, 
Right. Whose call was that? You think in the plane? Uh, I've we've I've had this conversation with. You're all talking about the takeoff from the very beginning. The pilot. Both. So it, it, well, here's why. Um, I've had this conversation with my friends over and over again. Is it the pilot saying, "Holy shit, I'm I'm, I'm flying Kobe Bryant and I can't let him down," or is it Kobe Bryant saying, "Hey man, it, my daughter's games in like fucking forty minutes and we've got to get there. You go or I go." Right. I know that's an odd question. That wasn't his first. I mean, he had been flying with Kobe for a long time. It's Fifteen right? years. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I assume there's probably a comfort level between the two of them. Yeah, I don't know. God, even even it's even strange to even comment on Kobe, right? It feels even weird. Like it does. It's, it's so he new, was yeah. my he, look. He was my favorite player, my favorite athlete, and uh, as you know, and I, I told the story on the show. But my first year in LA was the first you know year they won the championship. Oh, We're yeah. the same age, all that shit, and like I, I fucking love Kobe. Yeah, yeah. But everybody keeps asking that question of like, like how does this happen? Yeah, right. Because he's so famous, and Dan and I discussed it, you know. I, it's the biggest celebrity we can remember dying close to their prime in a while. Yeah. yeah. Without like ODing or something fucked up. No, no, right? you're right. Um, and I just wonder what that final conversation was of like, hey man, go ahead, you're the best pilot there is, or if the pilot was just <laughs> like, I got this, like we're good. I'm, I'm, yeah. You never know the answer. Right, you yeah, never right. know the answer. Right. You never you're know the answer. Well, it, it, it's tough to even say something without feel like you're disrespecting one of the two. I, I mean, you got to be at the end of the day. It's got to be the pilot, right? Pilot's getting the one flying. That's his job. But even then, he could just be mm -hmm. like, "Hey, boss, it's it's a sketchy today. How bad do you need to get there? Do you feel safe enough to get safe enough to get us there safely? You know, I've, I've been doing this 15 years. We've flown through a lot of shitty weather. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right, man. You know what? Let's go. Yeah. And you know, and, and ultimately, you know. And yeah, it wasn't like, like it was said. a hurricane. I mean, when they when the when the plane or the plane, the fucking helicopter malfunctioned, they were I think 100 meters away from clear airspace. Yeah, it was right? like super close. So it was like it's not like it, they were in the middle of the eye of a hurricane or anything like and that. And I listened to the uh, to the um, the air traffic control mm -hmm. tran uh, transmissions between yeah. them as they they were, he kept saying go up the five, Roger. Can you yeah. see the five? And it was you know, and I'm not an air guy, but he kept, mm -hmm. can, it was a visual flight rate. Right. You know, can you see? Yeah, I can see. Can you see again? Yeah. And then they went into the clouds and he's like, Hey, you need to come low so you can see something like that. And then, and then there was just, it was like, it was just, it seemed like, like you said, like seemed like a 15 second lapse where had he been just mm -hmm. a few hundred yards or a mile or so further, they, they would have been in the clear. But, uh, yeah. Cause I, I know that fog really well out there living there right? all those years and yeah. like shit. Well, first text was to a buddy of ours who flies for the LAPD and he goes, man, they, we couldn't get up yeah, that they, morning. They're grounded. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, he was like, they were grounded us that morning. But See, uh, And I was wondering about that. Is Are they like overly <laughs> cautious just because it's, you know, it's like, you know, it's a government kind of thing where they, where they put regulations or was it really that bad where they couldn't, but. You'll never know. Yeah. I will, I will say this about Los Angeles. I think another reason why they're cautious is there is so many houses in those hillsides and hiking trails and all that shit. Like, where they crashed, I mean, they were right by a hiking trail. Yep. And like, yeah. yep. There's so much footage from the ground of people's cell phones, and you're like, yeah. Jesus, man. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. What I tell people who always ask, because we, we, hosting the sports show, we get this question. We've gotten it a lot in the last few weeks. Is like, uh, you'll never have the answer, one. No. Two, uh, they've known each other for, what, 15 years at this yeah. point? Like, whoever made the final call really doesn't matter at that point. No, like, right? They're it's gone. There was a relationship fucking, of trust. Yeah, there's nothing you can fucking do about it now, so. Yeah. Why ask? But I, I think it's one of those freakish things where everybody wants an answer, and it's like you're not going to get it, yeah. dude. Everyone had thought like I, I know personally. I'm like, oh, here comes another death hoax. Like when mm. it first got reported, I'm like, what I told Dan, mean, I go, I'm dude, like, I don't believe real. it. I told Dan, I yeah. don't believe it. Yeah, 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 go, yeah. it didn't seem real. Nope. No, and especially TMZ. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude, right. They're, they're I saw some... TMZ and I was like, ow. And then Fuck Yahoo you. Sports was the next one I saw. I was like, oh shit. Did you did you see that? It was that his family found out, or or TMZ was reporting before the family was even notified. <sighs> yes. Yeah. So, and I guess they didn't want to because of the crash, and they, you know they've got to identify the remains, and they were like, "We're not going to have these for forty-eight hours." Really? Um, yeah, yeah. I. That seems like a long time. It, it does. Know. And um, I guess you know the first day they identified like three or four people. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. It was. It was like. And ESPN pieces. was cautious, and they were like, "Sources say Kobe Bryant and his daughter were on the plane." But that's how Vanessa, knew. right? That's how Vanessa found out was th yeah. through you TMZ. Know, I, yeah. Is it everybody? Oh. Everyone did. All, every single person did, and like because it was TMZ, nobody believed it, obviously. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, there's nothing to do, but that's just the world we live in. But that fucking sucks. Sucks, right? Yeah, I was just listening to a debate. Like, I mean, does that make it any easier, hard? I mean, it, it's fucking devastating, regardless. Like, right. you're gonna find out, but um, like the environment that you find <clears throat> out in, there has to be a better way than fucking TMZ. I don't know. 
I, like, there's no good environment to find out that information. No, no, yeah. No, no. So I feel like finding it out from afar. Does make I mean, the certain knowing for certain would be one thing. Like if it was a rumor and they didn't know, that would cause some yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like, honestly, not that TMZ is in the right there, but I feel like hearing it that way and being able to do your initial processing in private without people around is yeah. probably it probably benefited them in some way or another. So I I, I, so. I watched an interview with Harvey Levin, <clears throat> who's you know the the, the yeah. guy from TMZ, and they were like, "Yeah, man, that's the yes. biggest story of all time." One of them. How did you break it? How yeah. how was it you fucking dick, dickheads that did it? And he goes, "Man, we found out like thirty minutes after it happened, and and we knew, and no one else knew." And he goes, "Then you know we're trying to get a hold of Kobe's reps, and we're on the phone with him for an hour, and we said we know he was on that flight. What do you want us to do?" They sat on it for an hour. No, Which, they, well, no, they're, they're, news, they're talking to them on the phone, the, the representatives of Kobe, and the, the Kobe people are trying to confirm it and back yeah. and forth or whatever. Finally, Harvin Levin was like, man, I, we know we have it, and we know this is what it is. We know it's Kobe. Yeah. They didn't know who else was on the plane, but they knew Kobe was. And they were like, what do you want to do? And I guess his, he's, he said on, on TV, he was like, his reps were like, go ahead. Go really? Ahead and post the story out. So, All right, well, yeah, and it makes you feel not as dirty. You know what I mean? But that's what I'm saying. If TMZ sat on it for an hour, saying, "Listen, we we know what we have, but yes. we we're looking for you to help us steer the in the narrative in a right in the right yeah. way," at some point. And you know, know how it went? Some fucking dude that works at air traffic control in LA County, he, yeah, fucking he's... called TMZ and was like, "Hey, give me 25 grand. I'll tell you some really good information." And yeah, that's, that's how it went down. Yeah, like, there's I, no question. That's how it went down. Looking back at it, <clears throat> that guy probably could ask for anything because uh, Harvey Levin was like, "This is the biggest story we've ever had in the history of our." Wow. Website, and he goes, "We've never had more traffic, web traffic that day than that day." And blah 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 blah. And now we got off on this, but that's what happens when you're drinking, talking about beavers, fighting each other, watching war propaganda, racist pelicans. You know, we're we're at the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who's inspired you or helped you get to where you are. Uh, I'm going to ask you two, who who are your drinking bros of the week? To where we are right now. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It's, it's going to be. It's going to sound totally. Uh, uh, canned but uh i, I can throw it out to josh um as my drinking bro so i uh i had this idea for doing this uh tv show i started writing this script and and uh um and i just threw it out to josh one day because he's he's so fucking quick on his feet with jokes and i was like and we were working together and i was like yo do you want to you want to write a show with me and, and literally this was this was how we structured our uh, collaborative effort. Hey, do you want to write a show with me? Okay. And that, <laughs> that was the extent of it. And then one day I was like, Hey man, uh, I was thinking of taking a stand up class. And he's like, let's do it. And, uh, so Josh has always been my, uh, my, my, my guy that's by my side and, and, uh, and, and now leads the charge on, on a lot of the things that we do. And, and, uh, so, uh, I was sort of the idea guy at first, but then Josh was a hundred percent the guy who implemented and, and kind of took, just what was, you know, like, a, hey, this would be a mm -hmm. fun hobby to do and has now turned. I mean, we are here because Josh has continued to uh, oh, man, so um, to drive us. Up. Yeah. So you yeah. think that yeah. maybe he's kind of like your Heath Ledger and you're kind of like his Jake Gyllenhaal, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Is that, yeah. is that so which one's Heath, though, because he's dead. Yeah. Oh, Time will geez. tell, I suppose. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'll go by yeah. skin you're tone. You're going down. Yeah, you look a little paler. <laughs> I'm way paler. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're you, you look like the Heath in this sitch, I'm but just, yeah, he's kind of he's a better looking dude. Yeah, he's very gentle. Now, who are you going to say? Some schmuckatelli well, that lived down the street from you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Some bullshit like your <laughs> wife? Yeah, Fuck yeah, you. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Yeah, mine's Tim who lives down the street. He cuts my lawn every week for me. Yeah, fifteen dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> if you need Tim, Tim Highland, he's great. Uh, you know, can't recommend him enough. <laughs> well, makes, he makes great uh, piscotti. Yeah, right. you know? uh, I mean, I'll say just where we are now as far as like podcasting and, and uh, a huge Theo Vaughn fan. Yeah. Ah, yeah. shit, man. We try to get Theo on the show. Dude, I, I, you know, I like yeah, about yeah. it. Hey, guys, hilarious. He's mm. funny as shit, man. It, it is, and it's so spontaneous and he's, he's, um, he's like crazy vulnerable. It gets on there, just mm. says whatever. Like he's like truly, I mean, the guy <laughs> will just break down on the thing and, and it's, uh, Oh, it's just not a mold you see all that often, so I think it's pretty cool, man. I, I'm like, he is rad, thing. man. Yeah. I, we tried, so we've tried to get him on the show, and he's he's crazy busy, right? Yeah, he does stand up yeah. and, and everything, and uh, uh, he's always extremely polite every time we chat, and he's great. And we will get him on the show eventually. But I'm glad you brought him up because 
we are fans of people like that as well. And like, you know, just because we have a podcast that's a comedy podcast, we're not in competition with anybody. Like, right, right. We love Theo Vaughn. We've mm-hmm. had Fighter and the Kid on. We've had, you know, we love Rogan and all these guys. Yep. But Theo, man, I, because I, I follow him on Instagram as well, he'll have like a blind person. Dude, anybody. No, but literally one show was, uh, it said special guest, a blind person. <laughs> right. And he goes on, on his Instagram. <laughs> It's this blind chick, and he's sitting there, and he goes, man, I'm going to be honest with you. I've never even talked to a blind person before, <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. and I want to have a blind person on my show. Uh, here she is. Uh, How long you been blind? <laughs> and, like, it's a full fucking show, an hour of that, but he's so genuine and yeah, sincere about is, it that dude. you're like, yo... This is hilarious. The other day, no lie, he had a plumber on. Yeah, yeah, like Joe the Plumber. Or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he goes, man, how long you been a plumber? Yeah. Cleaning up those pipes <laughs> full of shit. Yeah, and you're just like, you're dying laughing. Oh, yeah, and you're yeah. like, but he's genuine and sincere. Uh, and it's a it's a really funny show. Uh, he's a funny dude. dude. turn anything into just the most hilarious he could read like uh, uh, like the Gettysburg Address, and you would just be falling over laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it was originally written as a comedy bit. <laughs> it was, yeah, 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 yeah. It was a stand up. So. Man, four scores and yeah, seven right. years ago. You know what four scores is? Yeah, they exactly. Don't just go off. And you know what four feet. scores yeah. is? That's me going down to my dealer's <laughs> right. Trans Am right. Right. on a Tuesday, <laughs> yeah. getting meth, cocaine, <laughs> heroin, and then maybe some pure MDMA. That's four <laughs> scores. Um, but he's a funny dude and inspiring too. Like yeah. if you don't know his story, um, shit, he's been trying to become a stand up comedian forever. He was on the fucking real world. Yeah. Like, oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 He was one of the first old, like, OG. like him and puck. Yeah. yeah, dude. And he's been on four years trying to do it for years on the road for years. And then, uh, goes on Rogan explodes. Yeah. And, uh, he's Theo Vaughn. He's great. Um, that's a, I, I like that one. It's great. Uh, yours is really yeah. shit. Yeah, this way, guy's way a, to go. Yeah. <laughs> right. This guy's a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you're good on that. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for being on. Where yeah. can everybody find you? Kill Cliff Podcast. Where's it at? You can go on uh, Kill Cliff on all the on all the the primary channels. Look up Kill Cliff K I L L C I L I F F dot com on Spotify. Uh, also under Entrepreneurs Comedy, common spelling. Yeah. But that's uh, that's Josh and I, entrepreneurscomedy.com, Entrepreneurs Comedy on uh, on all of social. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thanks for being here. Uh, and again, go to KillCliffCBD.com. Promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off and free shipping. Gentlemen, I appreciate the time today. Uh, for D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.